Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Friday. Well, here we go. The tropics are really heating up over here in the Atlantic. Um, this is Invest 93L, which I want to get to in a minute. But before everybody forgets about it, I want everyone to notice this wave, this tropical wave over here coming northwestward, um, north of the Caribbean islands over here. It's interacting with a tut, an upper trough over here, and it's blowing all sorts of thunderstorms. Um, it even has some nice low-level vorticity over here, but it's not going to develop within the tut. But the thing is, this tut is lifting out over here, and a piece is splitting away, and that's going to leave um, a paved area for this feature to come up in here with favorable, up, favorable upper-level winds um, as it gets ventilated by the tut cell backing this way, and the tut lifts out and an upper ridge builds over the top, and this may be a mischief maker and uh, just might be a problem for Bermuda over here sometime in the future. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Now if we zoom in on our main feature here, Invest 93L, we can see that a lot has changed from yesterday. Where the heat was concentrated yesterday, that has now moved westward into that area I was talking about where pressures are favored to lower and where the air has been wanting to spin. Now you notice, here's the center of 93L right in here, this all of a sudden has a whole bunch of convection over it. Yesterday this entire area was void of any convection or clouds of any kind and it was all off to the east over here. But we now see that convection is blowing off even to the northwest of the center and we're getting some nice cells forming near the center and um, that's because the mid-level energy has come this way and finally become stacked with the surface feature and although there is a piece over here of upper energy that still needs to get over here most of it has now finally consolidated and you can see what we've been talking about that when all this finally stacks up and consolidates the heat is able to bundle and feed back and you can start to get development now there's a buoy right over here, I believe. We can show the graph of it over here. You can see that the winds over the last 24 hours or so have really started to go up over here and the pressures have gone down over the last several days within the diurnal cycles. We had it all the way down to 2970 over here, which is um, about almost down to 1,005 millibars. And that was with winds all the way up at 20 to 25 knots. So we could have had a pressure of the low center even lower than that and that's a very respectable pressure for a tropical low in the Caribbean and this is very near if not already a tropical depression here because last night the circulation was closed and there's no reason to believe that it isn't still closed with these thunderstorms going off over it. You can see the very nice rotation going on in here. This is moving off to the west-northwest and I fully believe this will be tropical storm Alex before it reaches the Yucatan. Um, and you're going to see this start to really get its act together as it approaches the coast. Now that it has all the energy stacked, it has everything going for it. You've got a very nice, very just beautiful anticyclone over the top here. The winds you can see moving clockwise around the system, the upper winds I mean. And water temperatures in this area are just boiling hot and there is just a whole lot of energy available for this system to utilize and um, there's no reason to believe that this won't just keep developing. I expect development to be gradual, not likely to be explosive as the system is still rather large and it's still working on bundling itself up here into a tight system and it still has to bring this little piece of energy into the fold but it's really on its way here and this should easily develop into our first storm of the season. Um, if we go over here and look at the model tracks, you can see they initialized the low over here. There is a little bit of disagreement. Some of the models had it all the way down here last night. The low looks to be up here close to the more northern model runs this morning. And so there may be some initialization issues on the 12Z. You can see the BAM initialized over here. These tracks may have to be adjusted more towards the northern end over here. You can see they take them across the Yucatan into the western gulf. It looks at first glance like they're all in great agreement, but there is actually a big model war going on right now. The European has this taking off way far to the south into the Bay of Campeche and then going right into Mexico. And the GFS um, doesn't develop this at all, but it takes it up over here. You can see it, the gray, the thin gray lines over here are its ensemble members which take it up into Louisiana and you've got some runs such as the HWRF and the GFDL trying to take it up into the northeastern gulf which I think is overdone. I don't think it's going to recurve that far but I do think 
This is an area, this is a concern for the area of the Louisiana Gulf Coast westward, and I think this entire area of the Gulf right here down to Mexico should be worried about this and be watching it very closely. Um, I want to show you some of the GFS runs. This is the GFS initialization of the 500 millibar winds, and you can see the ridge over the southeastern U.S., and this is promoting a very westerly component to the mid-level steering over here. You can see 93L sitting down here off the tip of Honduras and Nicaragua. Here's the surface map initialization. There's 93L, and we've also got ridging at the surface over here, which is promoting a mostly eastward component to the steering. Now, if we go out to 48 hours here, we see that the ridge starts to shift a little bit eastward, and you notice the flow is no longer easterly, but it's now out of the south east or southeast over here, here's 93L, um, and you can see that the flow, the window is starting to open up for movement in this direction. Here's the surface map, you can see the surface flow, there's still a ridge in here, but the flow is becoming more southeasterly with time, and this is 93L right here, of course. Um, out to 72 hours now, you can see the ridge over here, and the flow becomes even southerly or south-southwesterly as you approach Florida over here. The surface map shows the surface flow doing the same thing, becoming southeasterly, and it has the low back down here, but once we go out to 96 hours, the flow is still southerly as this trough starts digging into the eastern U.S., and the GFS takes a lot of the rainfall into the northeast gulf. I can't quite figure out why it keeps the low all the way back here. It doesn't really develop the thing, so it's kind of hard to say what it's doing over here. It's got a whole bunch of dry air and whatnot, so it's hard to say. But the bottom line here is the pattern, this trough is coming in. Now the models, this is where the European strongly disagrees with the GFS, is the European thinks this trough is just going to flatten out and kick out really fast. It's just going to come through and bam, it's gone. Just really fast and the ridge builds right back in and this thing gets jammed into Mexico. The GFS thinks this mid-level steering is going to remain southerly through the Gulf of Mexico for several days, and that's what the GFDL, uh, the HWRF, the hurricane models are picking up on, and they are known to have a rather poleward bias, which is why I don't think um, Florida, Alabama, or Mississippi really need to be concerned about this. The pattern overall around the world favors ridging, oops, ridging over the southeast U.S., um, so this trough isn't really going to want to hang around very long. It'll probably dig in, it'll probably start dragging this northward, but I don't think it's going to recurve it towards the northeast into Florida or something like that. This trough will likely lift out, and what is more likely here is to have a track over the Yucatan and somewhere into the northwestern Gulf. I'm not exactly sure where yet, but like I said, this entire area of the coastline from central Mexico all the way to Louisiana, west of the Mississippi, needs to be watching this, as this could be a problem. The system is going to be having favorable conditions all the way through the, its trek across the Gulf of Mexico. The upper anticyclone currently over the system is supposed to follow it, and it's just possible that if this trough over here digs in enough, it'll try to shear the system with some westerly shear as it approaches the coast, but this is still out in the long range, five or so days away before landfall on the Gulf Coast, and this system has the potential to be a bad problem. It could easily, if it, ha if it reorganizes well after its crossing of the Yucatan, 93L could easily become a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. Waters are plenty warm, and with little wind shear to deal with, there's no reason to believe that it can't strengthen. This is unlike most season openers that we're used to seeing, like Arlene in 2005 that came up into the Gulf, was a sheared system with all the action to the east of the center. So this is a very different situation. People need to be watching this very closely. This could be a bigger deal than your normal weak tropical storm to open the season in the Gulf of Mexico. This could be a bigger deal than that. I'm not seeing... Um, a major hurricane blow up like we were looking at um, a week ago when the European was showing a 950 millibar storm making landfall in Mobile. That's not um, a scenario which I'm really seeing as a possibility here, but it could easily become a hurricane if it takes advantage of the conditions in here, so we're going to have to watch it closely. We also can't forget about this in here. The tropics are really starting to heat up as I opined they would by the end of the month into the early part of July. We could see the real kickoff to the season here upcoming, so we'll be watching.
That's it for now. Thanks for watching.